Hey, Phil, one goofy note. Uh, what was that? Sorry, my volume was too low. So, um, uh, it looks like your calendar invite has magically also added in a Google Meet as well. I hope everybody knows that, like they're supposed to be coming to like the Zoom meeting, but, uh. Yeah, I mean, it, Google does that automatically to every meeting. Okay, though. okay, but, you know about yeah. it, right? Cool. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of annoying, but. No, 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 it's fine. But I did reiterate by email today. It was on Zoom. So hopefully. All good. Yep. Guess we'll see who else joins. We have. We'll oh yeah, there's plenty of people dropping two. on in. They're just quiet. Just put the HackMD in the chat. Someone's already on top of taking attendance. Sam's having audio issues getting connected to Zoom, so he said, give him a second. Let me double check at this point. Can you hear me? The bats. Zoom was giving me a particularly hard time joining tonight. <laughs> Really? Okay. Well, I'm glad you made it. Yeah, no worries. It was just, it's, it's one of those funny things where you're like, I click, I, I paste the open containers link and like join this link. And it's like, pops up the next thing of like, okay, now enter the meeting ID. And I'm like, literally just did it. So I paste it in the browser and the browser's like, download Zoom for Linux. I'm like, literally have it open. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, can I just double check if you can hear me? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Audio under Linux is amazing. I'm, hear I'm hearing a lot of static or whatever. Uh, yeah, I hear you, but I also hear background like. Shh. All right, I'll push to my phone. One sec. Did you style your hair, Alexa? No, I I have bed hair, and my cat is being annoying. I see. Yeah, all right. Hold on. Sam O'Carp is going to stuff the ballot box. He's two people on Zoom. He's two Sam O'Carps. Oh, there the other one just finally disappeared. It's just one of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, for, for a second, Zoom was holding on to a, your last attempt or something. Yeah, it didn't really want me to join today. I don't know. <laughs> this could be our quorum because I OCI TOB. Who else? Uh, 
Oh, Steve. Hey, hey, oh, there hey. he is. He's all here. Perfect. Look at that. And Vincent's alive. <laughs> yes. We haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> He's convoking. Yeah, that new job. Jeez. <laughs> Small companies are so much busier than big companies. <laughs> Fewer people to do the same amount of stuff. <laughs> yeah, so at this hour, I'm not, I'm not drinking anything alcoholic. We got, well, it's kombucha, but it's not, this one's not. <laughs> Smaller percentage. Right, do I, I, I saw I saw that everybody else was having like the existential bread, like baking, doing all this stuff. <laughs> so I went I went the kombucha route. So I've been like making my own kombucha for a month or two. Nice. It's it's related, right? Yeah, you can get home. Say hi, fishy. Alexa, oh. have you, have you <laughs> ever been like having the cat <laughs> drink? Is that what you're trying to do? Can you even know? Yes. A little low. Yep. Yeah, maybe okay. a little bit of volume. I'll go just to put you out. Okay, so do we have a uh, HackMD for this discussion or? Yes, is it, it is. In all the in the pull Zoom requests? Or? It's, in, it's in the Zoom chat. I can put it in else. Oh, I don't see it in the Zoom chat. Okay. Thank you, John, who's Again. staying. Quiet to himself. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we we have the uh, HackMD. I think someone's already put our names in there. It looks like most of us are there. Um, when we talked uh, roughly three plus weeks ago, um, the flow between 12th of May and now was expected to include uh, the PR that I finally responded to comments today and um, got some good comments in the last few hours, uh, some follow-up suggestions, which are also good. So I'll turn that around again. Um, what we thought we would have accomplished is um, I think potentially having that sort of in a, in a finalized state and maybe, maybe as far as the text, you know, whether it's an official final form, maybe it's close enough to, to look at those buckets and talk about our proposals because we had expected to be, uh, ready for a vote, um, by this, you know, June 4th meeting, um, so I'd, I'd like to hear what other people feel as far as, um, again, we've, we've had some good comments on the, on the getting started PR. I guess I'll post that link um, for those that haven't had a chance. Uh, it's pull request 76 in the TOB repo. So I just posted that link. Um, Alexa is also, working on, and I think you made a comment today or yesterday um, on the govern the charter itself. So we, we've, we've made some minor tweaks. Chris has a, an outstanding tweak there, uh, but Alexa was looking at a, a larger edit um, that he uh, does not have in draft form yet, uh, but hopes to very soon. Um, so there's also that work item that we've been plugging away at. Um, so with that said, what, what do folks uh, think about with respect to are we ready to, to talk specifics on Umochi and, or as do we want to finish this um, uh, project buckets and project scope, OCI scope, um, so I'll stop there and see if other folks have uh, opinions, thoughts. Are we, I, I guess at this point, are we wordsmithing or do we think there's fundamental differences in how we're 
um, at the the charter thing because if we're still at a fundamental level, then we should probably land that so we get to agree on, hey, here's what where charter is so that we can say these two projects match this and others are coming in as well. If it's just wordsmithing, then we've been talking about this for a while and maybe it's, you know, something we can just approve and then continue the wordsmithing. I think the charter, at least for me, the charter changes that I would like to see are mainly wordsmithing. So it's sort of, they're like basically the point is that right, right now the charter doesn't actually match the way that OCI has been running for the past like four years. And so it's just a matter of updating the charter so it actually reflects how we actually run things. Um, in particular, um, the whole TDC thing we've discussed a million times before um, is something which is like, it's just confusing to have a TDC concept in the charter when in reality the only thing we really care about is the set of maintainers of all OCI projects. And I think that just clarifying that and making it less confusing to read would be would be an improvement. Um, and there's a couple of things like, for instance, the charter has several references to run C specifically like hard coded into it, as well as runtime spec, because obviously the original spec of the charter and the OCI was for runtime stuff and yada yada. So um, yeah, it's basically just wordsmithing combined with just making it more accurate to how OCI is today. Um, so I think that I mean, at the at the most, it'll probably end up just being um, in line with what with the. I took a quick look at um, uh, at Phil's uh, at the current draft that Phil has of the getting started document, and I would say that the stuff that I'm aiming for in the charter changes are basically the same as, as what he has written at the moment, um, which is what we would want as well, because um, prefer, preferably you wouldn't want the the two documents to have disagreements about sort of basic stuff like that. Yeah. So and and that, that was that was ba the only reason that I would say I'd love to see the, the charter stuff pushed through first is because this is now an active conversation. <laughs> and uh, if there's not an impetus to change it, and you know, like I, 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 at this point, I'm keen on both Emochi and Oraz, that's great, you know. And I would, I'm ready to give green light because I, I see that they're useful and, you know. I and other people are using them. But if it means they merge in and then the charter just sits like it is for another however long, <laughs> then that's it's like a forcing function. All beans. Yeah. Like, uh, so that, that, that's kind of like, yeah, wordsmithing, sure, but only if one, you know, forces the hand of the other. Um, like Alexa said, basically, we've not taken this moment to do this in all this time because. We're like, yeah, but we're making progress. Let's not get distracted on that now. So that it hasn't ever been an active conversation. I mean, are we talking about approving them like just as an order in this meeting or this is the part where it goes out to vote and we, um... you're muted, Chris, go ahead. Sorry, uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's up to you. Like, so my, suggestion was to make a small charter change that would reflect the reality of the situation and then you could and then incrementally kind of clean up the stuff that alexa mentioned around the tdc run c references and just you know do that do that over time but the small change that we have suggested in that pr i think updates it at least in a way where things like emoji and other tools could kind of come in right afterwards so i, I don't think you have to do it all at once but um you know, approve a small change and then uh, vote in the tools and then we could incrementally work on the charter um, every, every, every meeting. That's how I would do it, but it's really all up to you. So I'm just I mean, confused because be there's the 76. Sorry. Is that the small change you're talking about, Chris? 76, no. uh, one no. second. 76 is the guide, right? Yeah, 76 is my kind of informal guide to the concepts. Yeah. And I was about Whereas, to say, and this 79 is the question about, can it just be OCI tools, which, yeah. Uh, I mean, Hang on, wait, but, to answer your question, 77 is, is Chris's PR, and it basically just removes the section of, of the, um, of, of, I think the, the yeah, of the, um, section one, which is about the mission. Um, it I mean, simplifies look, I, it. I personally think that, um, yeah, it simplifies it. Um, and I think that we can just, I'd, I'd be happy for us to just have a vote on that now and just accept it because 
um, the changes that I would have are basically overlapping with that, as well as mm -hmm. doing all the other like annoying words missing. And I think <laughs> yeah. that I agree with Chris that if we just if we accept this, at least we can say that on paper we are in line with the mission, even though we, the other bits of the charter need a little bit of work. Yeah, th then I think you could accept emoji and and or us and have it be aligned with with essentially the mission of the organization, and then we could go clean. Uh, things up any massive big changes regarding removing language from like around TDC and stuff like that. I do want I just want my legal counsel just to take a sanity check on it. Like this small change is fine, but any bigger ones I, I just may loop, loop in legal counsel just just as a heads up. Whatever the TDC is, we'll get counsel on it. That'll be great. Uh, no, it's just I just want to give people a fair heads up on, on <laughs> a lot of important people authorize those words. <laughs> I, yeah, if I rec yeah, yeah. It was a sticking point. Uh, so. Chris, Chris is just saying, do I want to do I want to mm -hmm. open any closets with potential skeletons? That's all. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah. yeah so yeah, my the 77 looks fine. So I mean, if, if you're okay with 77, you could I, I mean, everyone could just LGTM it. And if we have enough super majority, we could just merge it in. And then we could kind of consider that point done. And then you could move on to the discussion around uh, emoji and, and, and ORS and accept those if you want to and, and we could bring those in and then next meeting maybe did, to make more go ahead did, uh the is nitpicky but um yeah what's up that one at the top about the uh are we going to like incrementally show when when updates are happening i don't know that we even i mean like that update table uh it's got git history yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, whatever you can. Alexa, use the you history. have something in there about like having a table with v one dot one, what happened and. I, I, I sent a if I I sent a link which is the I have a draft that I'm working on and yeah. I updated the table as well in there. Um, because the one thing is that uh, I mean in theory, yeah, you have to get history. The one thing I would say though is that technically amendments to the charter need have a notice period, so they don't go into effect until thirty days after it was. Mm -hmm. given notice to OCI members. Yeah. And I think yep. that's something that we should have listed in the change box. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. So, so but that um, just means that, to set to have, but that doesn't mean to have a, a, a table like you have suggested no, it, it, there. It's an, it just it's needs an, to have the last update and you can see that we're now 30 days past whatever that last and, update was. And, and I email the OCI members when that, when that happens. Sure, sure. And, and that's all, that's it, so. Okay. okay. So. So I don't think, uh, so it doesn't yeah. have to have the suggestion is what I'm saying. Yeah. If we LGTM to merge this right now, then it would be good to go. Yeah. Just having an update with a date yep. that you can see 30 days after that. That was my point. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, wait, since we're all on the call, we can actually just have a vote here rather than LGTMing. Yeah. LGTMing it, but well, yeah, it. I mean, this is being recorded anyway, so I'm fine. We have Amy here also as a, as a witness, so. And we got quorum. <laughs> yeah, and then in the last minute, I think we've gotten at least four LGTMs. Okay. Okay. Um, perfect. So we may already be at. Uh, we need. We need at oh, least two thirds. One, two, well, Crosby LGTM did a couple of days ago, but. Yeah. Hold on. Eight. What? Yeah, I've got seven. We're good to go. Yeah, I counted seven in the past couple of minutes. So, okay. Okay, cool. We're good to go. Hey, so we could. One, two, we'll, we'll, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight. So I'll merge that one in and then you could discuss the next topic around. It's actually unanimous. Emoji, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we got everybody. Waifu just uh, LGT. Awesome. Love it. Cool. Um, Boom. So. Beat you to it. Oh, thank you. So I think, I think for, for me, um, you know, the, the, uh, I just lost my train of thought. The 76, uh, you know, my suggestion on buckets, you know, it, it sounds like we're, we're getting close on language there. Um, I think uh, probably what's most important is, does anyone have a strong opinion that we're missing some definition of things that should or should not be in OCI because I think we have to at least decide that ORAS and Umochi fit one of these buckets, you know, reference implementation, spec, library. Um, so, you know, you know, it sounds like 
uh, you know, potentially some folks are, are, are good with, with both of them at this point. Um, it'd be good to know if anyone has a strong opinion about inclusion or exclusion of, of either of them based on these sort of suggested buckets. Let's see. Regarding the buckets, I just want to say, sorry, from my point of view, I think that the buckets seem insane. The only project that is a little bit odd, and this is, you mentioned this actually in the document, is um, the artifacts. But, you know, it, it's, I, I don't think it's really up to me to discuss which bucket that fits in. That's obviously the artifacts people um, have much more of a say in terms of what, how they feel it that fits in. Um, but aside from that, I think that um, I, I can't think off the top of my head of any more categories that, that make sense, at least now. I mean, obviously, we can change it if, if a new project comes up in the future. Yeah, to that point, like actually we don't have artifacts in the specifications because we've been back and forth to whether it's a spec and it's not now. I mean, artifacts is obviously the wrench in the works because this thing, it was always built on images and the things that we've been talking about. And, and that's what I tried to reword a little bit in, in the proposal in the PR was, um, and this is sort of the cloud native thing that even Sam was talking about, is it's almost an acknowledgement that containers are core to cloud native deployments or whatever you want to call it, cloud native infrastructure architectures. And that infrastructure can be used for other things that you want to deploy as well um, alongside that infrastructure because distribution doesn't have to be limited to just a container or a runtime image. So that's the part that I was just trying to wordsmith a little bit. And, and that's been the feedback we had recently on this whole um, uh, Helm conversation around versioning was, hey, the spec, the, the whole OCI charter and everything only references images. Uh, is this artifacts thing an experiment or something? And so it, it, it's, it's just a matter of elevating it up a little bit. Um, that yes, OCI has the word containers in it, but I don't know, Bed Bath & Beyond have more things. Uh, a lot of things evolve past their original name. Yeah, the the tools repos. Are we looking at? I mean, like I, f I feel like uh, we talked about whether or not to like the, the the tools repos are not here. And I know we talked about whether or not they should be archived or what. And I know runtime tools is actually used for some things, but image tools I don't have not ever seen it being used anywhere. How, would that fall into one of these buckets regardless as that as that sorted out yeah that, that's a good question yeah so we um i'm afraid we we didn't talk about it last time because you weren't on uh <laughs> uh no i mean you um rightly brought that up two calls ago and i think because it's sort of out of sight out of mind you know those weren't projects i worked with or used, I, I kind of forget that they exist and Yeah, and, and that's where and then like I I forget what people even use the runtime tools for. It might actually be what Emochi does better. It, uh, some of the runtime like right. unpacking a layout ready for Run C to run it. Or I don't I mean, actually remember what people use. I think I could use it in, in quotes given that as discussed before it doesn't actually work. But the thing I was gonna say is that um, the the, the image tools, so image tools and runtime tools, I, I would argue, and I think we had a discussion last time, um, they're in a weird middle ground between, they are both for, well, let's call it light spec conformance, because for instance, the image tools repo has like a validate feature, which is meant to do spec conformance, which I think was the original intention of it. Um, in addition to the feature it has to unpack things, um, as for runtime tools, uh, I would argue it, it ha it's more like a library because it has, um, like it has a bunch of library helper functions to help you set up like a runtime config. Um, but, but, it, but it also, I believe, has a validate function um, as well. I would put them both in like the spec conformance bucket, even though they have features outside of that, because it seems like that's the main commonality. Um, and for the Umochi proposal, uh, I propose that we, and we can go through it when we go through it, but I would just to mention it here, um, 
it would be that the it would be subtree merged into Mochi because the main feature of image tools is that people would use it for uh, is the conformance stuff, and so we would merge it into Mochi so that you can just use it as part. The, the, the conformance tools would be part of the same repo. Um, that was my proposal. But That's the point fine. is, is that um, I would put them in the conformance bucket more than anything else, even though you could argue that they're both kind of libraries. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's got all kinds of validation stuff, tap, output, and whatever. Um, okay. So then that, that seems fine to put it under the conformance side for now. And even if people stay using runtime tools, then deprecating image tools, I don't know. I don't, I don't like having cruft around. I always felt like that was on a train to cruft. So. <laughs> no, I mean, this is the thing that you and Chris had brought up uh, around if we're going to adopt something we need to understand, or maybe it was Phil, uh, that we need to understand how do you, what is the process to get rid of it that we don't just wind up with a bunch of dead things in the org? Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, I think uh, to V Bats's point, the, there needs to be some kind of archival. So, you know, it doesn't have to be heavyweight, just some simple process whereby we can say no one's using image tools or runtime tools and its functionality is easily accomplished through X, Y, Z and yay or nay, archive it, you know, lock yeah. the repo. Yeah, I, I would suggest two thirds, just, just, you know, vote with like a 30 day notice, you know, and then you'll do some kind of public statement uh, on it. That's it. Yeah. And 30 day notice if people don't, what would be you know, like people say, uh, keep it around and it becomes a, a reopen discussion. Yeah. I mean, we, we would say, Hey, the TOB intends to archive this repo. We'd probably just, you know, market archive on GitHub and then leave that pull request open for anyone to kind of comment in that 30 day period before we kind of merge it in and, and, and archive it. So we'd have like a place to hear archive repos um, mm -hmm. and just give people comment period. If, if someone's using it or something, they could speak up or forever hold their peace. Yeah. Okay. Is that something we should add to this as far as a charter update? <sighs> um, let me know. Yeah, some we document separately. I mean, I think it wouldn't hurt to have it as, because um, I mean, the, the process of adding projects into OCI is, is listed in the charter, so I think it would make sense. Yeah. To have the process of archiving also listed. Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that makes sense as something we can tag on to that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe it adds a, uh, just a note of whether 76 should try and land. I mean, with the validation pieces, you know, yeah, they kind of sit between conformance libraries and just general libraries for working with the spec. Um, but yeah, that good call out that, that they're not, I think they should be listed here until we have make a decision to archive them. So I'll take a note on that. <clears throat> um, so that brings us back to um, the proposed project additions themselves. And so far, no one had sort of made a, a strong statement either way on, on whether they felt there were issues we haven't, you know, we've, the proposals have been open for months. Uh, I know there've been a few comments. Um, is there anyone on the TOB that has, uh, you know, strong feeling that we should discuss here, you know, in the 30 minutes we have um, before we, you know, 
move on to whether we follow that process of we've we've approved the charter update that allows us to add them after this call it sounds like we should either move toward a vote uh, but it'd be good to know if someone has uh, strong opinions or with Alexa here do we want you know a five minute overview of Umochi uh, what do folks want to want to hear about so we're talking about the image tools being part of conformance so Umochi would fit into the conformance category is that was that your recommendation no, no, much it would be a reference implementation. The, the the discussion was whether or not we should, and this is something that was mentioned a couple of times, is whether or not uh, the image tools should be merged into Umochi or not, um, as as both as a homage to the work that was done by many other people. Um, and in addition, it was a question of where should the where should the validate functionality live. Now, if the validate functionality makes more sense in OSTAC conformance, then I'd be happy to do it that way as well. Um, it, I, I don't have a strong feeling either way. It was just a matter of we shouldn't have both in OCI because it, it's confusing to have both. Um, so either we should the, the the core thing of image tools that is usable that is useful for many things um, is the conformance of the, the validation code. Um, the question is is where should it live? Um, yeah, and I'd, I'd be happy to put it either in Umochi or in OCI conformance or whatever. Are you importing from but, image tools today? Uh, in uh, yeah. no, we do use image tools for the test. So, we, so in the integration test, we do run the validate code on every single, like every single time you do a, a thing inside the integration test. Um, but there's no imports as far as I, as far as I can recall. But it, it so it shells out to a, a binary to do the validate. Yeah, uh, for, for testing purposes only though. It's not used by when you actually run it. Gotcha. Do we want to just do the emoji one and then the auras one separately, just so we can focus the conversations? Because I, I was waiting. Sure. I mean, we're. Sounds like we're already discussing emoji, so, so yep. we continue with that. I mean, yeah, I can give a quick overview, a very lightning fast overview. So Umochi is um, a project I started in 2016, which was meant to fill in the gap of that there wasn't a, uh, an obvious reference implementation of the OCI image spec. Um, and as I've mentioned a couple of times now, image tools had some issues with it. Um, and originally the intention was to make these changes uh, and get them merged into the image tools. But as Umachi grew as a project and people started using it, it became clear that it doesn't, um, it was too much things to be in the image tools uh, repo. And so, um, yeah, so effectively it's, it's used by quite a few folks now, like Cisco uses it. We use it at SUSE for building our images. Um, the LXD project and LXD projects use it for some of their building tools. Um, and so it, it's at least a somewhat fairly used project of its kind, um, and yeah, to to go to the new um, the new guidelines that we have in the in the draft that Phil was working on, um, I believe it's fairly unopinionated, and it is quite you know boring piece of infrastructure. I mean, you know, it's, it's it is basically a glorified tar extractor that that generates a couple of other things, um, and so it I think it it makes sense to have it in OCI because um, folks who want to play with OCI images. Uh, you see often there have been a lot of issues on the OCI image tools of people complaining about OCI image tools unpacking and repacking not working the way ex they expected. Um, and I think that that sort of shows that people expect that there, there to be a reference implementation of the image spec in the OCI repo. Um, yeah, hence why I'm, I'm pushing for, for Machi to be, um, to be in OCI. So you mentioned all the users. What's what's the primary use case other than because you're saying like playing around with it? But I mean, if there's people using it, what are what's the primary use that they're they're doing with it? Um, they're using it to build other tools on top of it mainly. I mean, so for SUSE, we use um, we have our own build service for building packages as well as uh, ISOs and things. And the system also use also builds container images. And so Mochi is used as part of that build system to build container images. 
um, Cisco, uh, oh, he's not on the call because he's a TV call, um, but the Cisco uses it for a similar purpose for also building images. So they have a tool called Stacker that builds top of it. Um, and then LXC has uh, OCI, um, has integration in OCI in that you can use OCI images as like an OC, as a template for LXC containers. Um, and the way they do that is that they build it on top of um, Scopio and, and Dumachi. Um, yeah, so the main purpose of, the main thing people use it for, at least from what I've seen, is using it as a tool for building other build tools so that they cannot worry about the intricacies of the OCI image spec and they can just use it as, given this OCI uh, image spec concentrable store, unpack it here with these particular config options and then I have all the information about the runtime and all the rest of it. So it, it, is, it also does the conversion that's in the image spec about converting from um, image spec configs to runtime spec configs as well. Yeah, and it's it's so far I've seen it as being a pretty active active use and actually like in production use uh, because <laughs> as 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 issues are yeah a few of the discussions I've been in with like having fixes propagate out or otherwise that there um, there are eyes on it. So uh, changes are, you know, whatever are recognized quickly and, you know, fixes are proposed quickly. So um, I, I do think it's one of those like nice and it uses the image spec in a way that makes it a little bit more, it's nice, but simple in a way that for some of the I mean, it's software, so it's intangible, but it's in, in, in the way that the image spec is kind of intangible for some people that it's not like a false structure besides the image layout side, like most of it's like mine types and checksums and whatnot, that it, it kind of makes a little bit of that, a little bit more like you can see and feel what's going on. Um, I don't know, like it's, it, I've used it for explanations, but it's also like, in production use and active in that way, so. Yeah, I just want to and, understand, um, like, one, sorry. I just said how it fits in the stack. So like, like yeah, what, what you're saying makes sense. So like, I guess I would want to see in the proposal um, if there are like specific users or specific other open source technologies built and using that, you should link to that in the spec, I think, that, that would, or in the proposal, I, th I think that would help understand it. Um, I I think I did. I might. I might be misremembering, but um, I'll, I'll double check after. Um, after. Uh, but yeah. But as for where it fits in the stack, yeah, I would say that it's it's a reference implementation. I mean, to give an analogy, I would say that effectively, it's to it, it, Umochi is to image spec what Run C is to runtime spec, in that it's a fairly boring piece of technology that you could then build other things on top of. Right. Um, and as for uh, and as for um, the other thing is is that at the moment the internal libraries of Umochi aren't something that are like supported in like a semver sense. Um, but one of the goals is to get is to get that done so that people can use it as a library. Some people already do. So um, Stacker, as I mentioned, they actually already use it as a library. Um, but they have to deal with obviously breakages from semver stuff because it's still pre 1.0. Um, but the CLI UX, much like Run C, is, is, is stable. Um, yeah, but my point being that also it could end up being usable as a library because unlike unlike Run C and unlike all the Go problems, I don't want to get into Run C's technical issues. But oh, actually, Go's technical issues. But um, for for the run, for Run C, it's not possible to use it as a library at least sanely. Um, for Mochi, it would be. Um, but yeah. Cool. I do see those examples in there. Thanks. No, I don't have any other questions. Yeah, I guess my only other comment would be you should add, if you have the, uh, some of those questions were answered in the FAQ on the bottom, I see. Um, so we should add the section. I, I guess it's a, a chicken and egg thing. If we add the getting started, should we put the, uh, should we merge that first and then reference those in these proposals? Because, uh, yeah, I'd like to understand or like have a statement about it as like, in relation to it being run C and the reference implementation. Yeah, 
Um, I mean, I don't, I don't mind doing it either way. Um, yeah, I can, I mean, I don't want to waste the call doing it, but I can, I can um, send, I can write an updated version and then repush it um, right off the call. And then we can have a vote on, um, on the actual issue. So I'm fine, I'm fine doing that. But obviously the getting started thing isn't merged yet, but I can at least reference it as being, uh, you know, I can actually, I can at least answer the question that, uh, that would be asked once the getting started stuff is merged. I'd like to know a couple of things um, about the Emochi name, the website, and the logo. Are those also things that are being donated, or is it just the code? It, it would have to be per the, uh, per the charter. Yeah. Um, the logo was designed by someone else, but it was licensed under Apache 2. So I don't, mm -hmm. have, I don't have copyright assignment for it, but it's licensed under the same as the project. And um, yeah, and the website I'm happy to I'm actually, I would be glad for, uh, for, the, for the, uh, Linux foundation to manage that for me. Um, cool. so I don't have to keep paying, uh, yeah. website fees. Um, but, uh, but as well, the only, the only contention, and I mentioned this, I think in the, in the, um, in the proposal, the only thing is just to make sure that we don't run into the same problem we had with the run C website, which is now dead. But at the time we had the run C website, uh, maintainers couldn't maintain the run C website. As long as that's still possible, then I'm happy for the Linux foundation to, to run the thing. Yeah, I think moving everything over to Netlify makes everything like super easy. I see it's like a Hugo website anyways. Netlify is pretty nice. Should we discuss Oris then? Uh, I appreciate uh, the board background in Umochi. I, I, hadn't, I haven't used it, but it's good. Uh, summary of where it fits in. Yep, thanks. Good. Steve, are you our Oraz rep sales salesperson? <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> I'm trying to get better about not having my mic. Uh, you're on mute again. Yeah. I'm <laughs> All right. Do you, have one those, like a rigging endorsement. do you have one of those foot pedals? <laughs> no, but it was a good idea. Somebody else was mentioning that. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, I do have the funky keyboard that actually does have foot pedals associated with it. I don't, I don't know where the foot pedal is. Um, anyway, so Oraz got started as, uh, so the, the longer story is we wanted to add Helm charts to ACR. We went through this long process of, um, we added it as a unique API. Um, and then as we were finishing, we spent a couple of months trying to get stuff it into a registry as a, a side loaded kind of thing. And within three months that we're doing this work as well as everything else, we had several other things come up. CNAB was started at that point. Uh, we had some other uh, one singularity came up. Um, it was arm templates and um, there was some other one. I forgot the other one at the time. And we realized there's just, there's no way for us to scale. Like we can't have every team one, we don't want to chase every team that we want to support with ACR and we couldn't possibly ask Helm and these others to support us because it meant that you had to use an AZ ACR Helm command, AZ ACR Singularity, AZ ACR Terraform, blah, 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 it keeps on going. So um, we wanted to invert the model. So we wanted to make sure that the Helm team could add this. And it would only make sense if Helm could do it across all registries. Um, and since we were already doing all this work on registries, we realized that we were doing a bunch of work around the side that was not needed. Um, but the problem was when we started figuring out how do we push this content to it, and we were working with Josh Delitsky at the time because he was the Helm Chart Museum guy, or still is. Um, and it was kind of recognized that actually trying to push and pull content to a registry is kind of difficult. Um, there's a lot of things you have to incorporate, you know, from an end user, like from somebody like, uh, well, like Josh, right? He's, he's not this deep, deep, deep person. He's really a productivity person. He does amazing work. Um, and we wanted to make sure that anybody that wanted to push an artifact to a registry it was just brain dead simple. So Josh had worked up, worked with Shiwei, uh, one of our the engineers that actually did the Docker content trust stuff and knew all the deep implementations. And the two of them over Christmas, two years ago now, uh, wound up coming up with Oraz. Um, it was like a week into Christmas when we actually liked being at home. Um, 
that he was like, hey, I got this project we put together. And uh, it was pretty cool. It's evolved a bit, but it's basically as simple as these two commands that I push, uh, put out there as we literally, it follows kind of the same Docker semantics or as pull, you give it a username and password. Of course, it does all the other stuff uh, for secure passwords. Um, and you give it, you know, a URL like you would get with a container image. And then you could also push content um, and you ha have this option that you can specify what the manifest is. So you can specify its type, and then you just give it some files. The interesting, the cool thing, the way they did this was it's a binary that I can use it as these commands, but that's not really the main intention. The main intention is you would say Helm push, singularity push, uh, OPA push and pull. Um, so what they really did is it's really a Go library, a set of Go libraries that you assemble, and then you can wrap it into your CLI. They just happen to put a little binary front end on this so that you can actually run it standalone so that I can experiment with my thing first. And then after I'm really happy with, wow, I can really use a registry to store OPA, for instance. Um, then I, they can create an OPA library, an OPA client that would use uh, ORAS as well. Um, so by making it simple like this, so that most people don't need and don't want to know the details about a registry and they can just benefit from all of the authentication and repo structures and tag listing and all the other stuff. Um, we've had a lot of people come back and just start using uh, ORAS as the way that they can just focus on their thing, benefit from registries and get started. Um, it's used in a bunch of things. I think that what's the latest one, the WebAssembly project um, that the uh, Radu and some folks have been working on. Um, so it, it's funny because I was looking, I was when uh, Alexi was talking about the, uh, sorry, Alexa, I think I said a C, sorry, um, was talking about what uh, section to put it in. And, you know, I think of it as more, I mean, yes, it's sort of a reference implementation of artifacts, but it's really its intent is a, a library uh, to be used. It just, and it's a reference implementation of the pattern. So there's certainly a lot of questions we can talk about which category it goes in, but that is the intent. Its intent is to be a library um, to give you productivity. It just so happens to have a nice little binary uh, build associated with it to get yourself started as well. And I mean, as far as like some of the nice things, some of the nice things there, like the authentication and endpoint stuff, is largely leaning on like container D. Um, although I do like the way that it wraps it and makes it a decent library as well. On top of that, um, and I th and I know that in the past when Derek and I had talked about even pulling in the Docker registry of like a proof of concept of the distribution, but then it was like, but it's got all this other logic for you know backing it with other storage backends rather than just a dumb simple thing. Uh, I'm not sure how we feel collectively about using those convenience backend functions or relying on something like container D or whether, I don't know, I'm, that's up for discussion as far as I'm concerned, but I like it. I was a little did distracted make, by the cute dog. <laughs> fair, but did, did, that, did that make sense? I mean, like, is, is like, I like the way that it presents it and it makes the concept more accessible. You know, like you said, like artifacts and pushing and pulling it to the registry over like the distribution spec API. But it does also leverage existing tools that at some point, whether or not, uh, I assume that container D will always honor some of those same things in the spec, but if container D ever diverged, then it would leave uh, or as kind of wedged in either an old version or vendoring that logic or having to wholly copy it over or fork it or something like that. Um, that's where you like, lost me because you started talking about the storage providers of the Docker registry. Just when, when, you, when you bring in all these other additional functionalities, like we don't specify authentication, so it's not like a super simple tool, but it, it you're, you're uh, Well, the goal, if I understand the question. Yeah, the, I, think I, I think I conflated the issue in my head before I, as I was getting it out of my mouth. You're right. They're two different okay. issues. But so, regardless, yeah. I do, I do I'm like. I'm all distracted by your very cute dog. I just, I was, I Fair. just noticed that Alexa said the same thing. And we, I'd actually like you to bring the dog, just get used to it. But anyway, um, 
what was so the, did you have a the, concern that i was trying to grok that's what i was trying to understand what and I guess the same is true for Emochi because it, it pulls in other libraries as well, but that that if it does certain things like being a refer reference, implement reference implementation and or making the specs dumb, simple, like boring to the, but functional, that uh, if it pulls in those things like authentication or protocols or other things from outside repos, that uh, eventually it'll just consume those consume those things or fork those things if the if the upstream of those features ever changes or uh, I'm, I'm I'm this is something I'm kind of curious about because a lot of Run C eventually became written all in itself, but um, yeah. Emoji and Emoji and Oraz both rely on features that are in other projects as well. So I was going to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to take the question about how do we avoid the run C problem. Um, so the, the, yeah, the run C obviously had this issue where um, basically all the development of the runtime spec actually happened in run C and then we like tried to merge it over to runtime spec when it was, you know, chugging towards 1.0. Um, this would be ideally something we would avoid in the future because this was a, this was, um, uh, a pain for everyone involved. Um, so I can speak to Mochi in particular, but I can, but I'll just say generally, I think that one of the things that we should do, and this thing that I think was mentioned, it was mentioned in the last draft of Bill's getting started document, but I don't know if it's still there, um, is that we should make it clearer that for reference implementations of specifications in OCI, um, there is a stricter requirement when it comes to developing features, which is that when it comes to f things that are directly related to the specification, um, you, now, so I would say you can't have a released version of the project that contains this, that contains a feature that is not reflected in the spec, um, unless you have like a way of marking something as being experimental, because on the one hand you need to have, and this is where balance is necessary, because on the one hand, you don't want to have a specification that was developed without, a, without reference implementations that can actually test the implementation, um, which is a problem that we had with image spec, because image spec had issues when it was getting up to 1.0, where we like rewrote vast portions of it, like in RC3, right? Um, and so you want to avoid that problem, but on the other hand, you want to avoid the run C problem. I think it's, there's a balance necessary, but I think that something as simple as saying that you can't have a released version of a reference implementation that has features that are related to the specification, like extensions that are released as supported is not allowed. Um, okay. And I don't know exactly so what the that, wording so that should be, but yeah. That is one thing, and then, but then, if it, if any of the upstream projects that you pull in cause that to be affected, like you know, authentication, or if you know, if and when we get this next iteration of signing more ironed out, you know, like they pull in these features, I don't know if if there should be any guidance or criteria on that, because a lot like, of like the backwards the, compatibility the, generally with the project is that still coming. I, I, I'll admit I'm not super included in on, on distribution spec, but uh, I would guess that authentication is something that is like in the spec or is at least seen as being within the purview of the spec. Well, so how we dealt with it with ORAS is we actually don't really do much of an authentication. We literally just do support the basic auth flow um, so that we didn't have to pull in because each of the registries do have their different authentication models. Uh, so I'll, I'll focus on the authentication part for a second, then I'll come back to the dependencies and versioning part. Um, and the way we did it actually works pretty interesting, at least with ACR and, and, and would work, I'm sure, with other registries as well, is the way we do the two-factor two auth is, um, actually, I have to remember how, I think this might have been a question that it may not work anymore, uh, was we can just pass, if you do a Docker login, that at one point or as would go look to see if the Docker config was there and we would just leverage that authentication tokens to be able to pass. And maybe that was the thing that got removed and I was still trying to track that. But we were explicit to avoid, like our goal with or is it absolutely should work across all registries. Um, 
and the it, different implementations of registries of, for authentication is exactly the part we try to avoid. Um, so that's the authentication part. The uh, library part is, you know, that's a good, I, I, I won't, I don't know how much to speak in too much detail on it, but I, we do, they do, I, I don't really check code and other than readme files, um, is they do versions. So if there was ever a change that, you know, and I'm sure there will be at some point, a container D change or some other change that we wanted to change which libraries to use that, you know, enable the thing, then there would be a new version and that would be the version you would use. And if you need the older version, you can use the older version. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, I guess my comment here is that I don't see ORAS as even a reference implementation. I definitely see it as a library that helps ease of use of building a tool that pushes and, or pulls from the registry, which of course relies on software somewhere to actually use and implement this, the specified ways of doing that, the OCI image, the distribution spec. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've been, uh, you know, it was dead simple to use ORAS and pull out all my special code that was copied from Scopio, which was copied from an old version of Docker, you know, just to replace that with ORAS, which re relies on the container D go API with kind of the nice or as content uh, store implementation that makes it really easy to use as a library. So in that sense, I, I think it is a really nice kind of starter project for anyone who wants to interact with the registry for any media type. Um, yeah, so uh, I think as a library, it's, it's sufficient as far as how it helps people utilize some of these concepts in a pretty simple way. Well, I was going to say, like in terms of reference implementations, I, I think there's an assumption that the distribution spec reference implementation will be a registry, but I actually think it's probably more useful in the OCI to think of the a reference implementation for distribution spec as a CLI like ORUS. Um, I know we talked about kind of, uh, or C was mentioned as a reference reference implementation for the artifact spec, but uh, we're not even sure what's going to be in the artifact spec today. I mean, we know that we we want to be able to interact with the registry in kind of an artifact generic way. So uh, the distribution spec is intended to to do that. So I, I think from the perspective of yes, it should support everything in the artifact spec in the same way that the distribution spec should. But I, I still kind of see it as like a reference implementation of a registry client. And I, I'm yeah, I was going to bring up the same that. thing because, yeah, I was going to bring up the same thing as, as Derek because um, from my point of view, and not to diminish the work of artifacts, but from my point of view, I see it as like a supplementary document to the distribution spec as like distribution spec is this pooling thing and then artifacts is how do we formalize dealing with different media types that aren't part of the OCI. And so from that perspective, I think it makes, makes sense to argue that ORAS is a reference implementation or a library or however you want to put it of the distribution spec as a client rather than of artifacts. Um, but that's just my, my view. And this is, and I think this links again to where does artifacts fit in. Um, but from, at least from what, what artifacts is now and from what I've seen when reading through it, it reads to me more like a supplementary document to the spec. Um, but I don't know, I don't know what the intentions are long term with it. No, yeah. it's a, I mean, you're, you're bringing up the exact conversation. I, I think I don't know if you were around when these conversations were happening, but it was that you, what you just described is exactly the debate we had. Originally, it was a PR in the distribution spec, then it was out, then it was in, then it was, and, and then it wasn't a, we thought it was a spec, then it wasn't a spec, and now we're thinking it is a spec. So I expect it'll evolve a little bit. Um, as with all these things, like if you were to start over, it, it probably would just be part of the distribution spec. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm also now realizing the comment that we made around the fact that the manifests are not in the distribution spec and the, like the conformance tests, a, a, a quick tangent and I'll come back. It was just interesting that the conformance tests don't actually reflect whether a registry supports image index or just or manifest. Like those are details that aren't in the distribution spec. So I expect we'll get some involvement here overall um, as we you know, think about how to relate these two. Um, but yeah, it, it really is. It's it, it's interesting when you said that, Derek. It's 
to some extent, it is a distribution client, sorry, distribution spec client implementation that happens to broaden it for, for artifacts. Um, my hope, like our hope for ORAS isn't that people use the ORAS client as a binary. Our hope is they build a first class experience for singularity push, right? Helm push, you know, Terraform push, those kind of things. Um, so that's the hesitation on the, but look, we're not offended. So I, th I think my concern with calling this a, a distribution spec reference implementation is that it seems like it's really the containerd docker remote that is the distribution spec reference implementation that's actually being used and derek you can correct me you know if, if i'm wrong as your containerd maintainer but that's not the piece that's being donated to oci right now so there's nothing that oci is going to do to say that the containerd implementation is going to necessarily always conform i'm expecting that it will but that's not the piece that is being donated as like a reference implementation for distribution spec. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of whether or not containerd will conform to it. It's it's the problem is the distribution spec has more than what containerd is intended to do. For example, there's like nothing in containerd for like listing tags. Like that's just out of scope for like what's in the containerd API right now. But like it would make sense for something like Aura's to list the tags. And then maybe you call into a container runtime that actually goes to run such a thing. Um, so yeah, there's always going to be some stuff that's kind of just out of scope for the containerd implementation. Um, but maybe fair. we want to move it to somewhere. Like maybe maybe we take the containerd remotes, and if we decide it's something good, we can split it out of containerd as well. Like we're we're fine with that. But like our our API is is pretty simple on purpose to just handle like push, like fetch and push. Yeah, and, and when you know, the search category of stuff, whether it be tags or whatever the replacement of the catalog API and so forth, those are things that would be logically things we would add to Aura as, as a client. Like, you know, what, that's been one of the questions in the Helm community is like, hey, how do I list these things? It's like, well, that's our problem. Like we have not really got done a great job to replace the, the um, catalog API and the tags API is good for what it does, but it's fairly limited in the scope of what's actually in a registry. It's like, it's, it's a narrow slice after you figured out how to get there. So as we do get some standards around that, and I'm excited to, to see what Joey does once he gets Quay going, um, that we can uh, get, you know, the pub sub stuff he's been doing. And if that got adopted, yeah, we would absolutely put that, you know, I would see, love to see that as a proposal in the URS client. So I, I'm not trying to push for a reference implementation or not at this point. I'd just be happy to, to see it kind of, you know, incorporated as a, as a library. And as we evolve, if we decide we want to make it, a, like, honestly, it'd be nice to have a reference implementation of distribution if we finally finish that up. Um, and then that would be the server and then there'd be the client. Um, so that's maybe something we can address later on. So we're slightly heading into overtime, um, <clears throat> which is not horrible, but um, I think probably what's most important is, is anyone <clears throat> unhappy with the level of discussion so far and wants to hold off? No, I, I like the discussion and I'm not, I'm, I'm, Samuel asked the question that I was more trying to get at there. Um, much better with words in English. Um, the uh, I, I am liking both the tools and and using both of them, and um, I think a lot of it just helps to kind of codify that they're all are meant to play nicely together and to make the stuff more accessible. So, um, and and especially if they're already active communities, then let them do their own thing. Like like we already do with Go Digest and SE Linux, like they're used in parts of the stack. There's eyes making sure that it stays, you know, supporting each other and that's fine. Um, so uh, I just made one comment on the, on the uh, proposal PR there that it, I don't know if, it, if having four out of six maintainers be from one employer is an issue or not. Um, 
that might have to be back down a little bit and uh both both emoji and Oriz, i'm i'm happy to put my hands on but uh if other if we need other maintainers or something to balance it out as well so yeah and i, and I will just say like josh does a lot of the work there too so it's it's really not like it was you know, josh wanted to do it and sure. he was asking how do you do it and she was the one that kind of provided it but it's I actually don't remember who are the maintainers. It's, it's probably me, Sajay, uh, Shiwei, and Josh. But that's we can. I'm more than happy to have others, you know, contribute. Yeah, it's it, it was it, it it was like for for I, I just know that that some of the places that we've had um, in other repos is that like if you have more than two people from the same company that can LGTM things, and it was just part of the open governance piece, so. Four, four people from Microsoft might be uh, uh, a non-starter just on that one topic, but we can figure that out. How do we help Alexa out? Because <laughs> it's not. I know he only had. One. Yeah, no, he only had two maintainers on that project. Which Does he have two? Because I thought last need, I looked at was one. <laughs> if you need two LGTMs, and that project's already stuck. No. Yeah, no. uh, I listen, Vincent. I'd be happy to add you right now if you like. I, I was about to say I've, I've, I've already had commits on emoji as well, so that's that's fine. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I think I think this is a good level of discussion. I I don't, I don't see that we really need that much more deliberation on them. I'm uh, I'm I'm in favor of both of them, but I don't know what next steps we need to take. Phil up up to having a vote or whether we merge them into just a tools repo or what, uh, I think they're fine to stand on their own. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, if folks didn't see Alexa's comment on the tool suggestion, I think there was some good thoughts there about it gets a little messy to have kind of a collection of things. You can't really separate out maintainership. And so unless we, we, I think that would be a last resort if we, if we can't, come to some agreement on just them being standalone OCI projects um, is kind of where I am on that. And then I think as far as a vote, I, um, you know, I, th I think we could either go the route of having Amy or Chris, you know, do a, a formal, you know, all the TOB members get a vote and get seven days to, to make that vote, or we just, set next uh, Friday as as a termination period and just use simple LGTM and the two PRs. Uh, I think either one e either one has a gives us a record and a vote. Um, but, I have no preferences. Good either way. Yeah, so um, it sounds like if people end up with a new question, the proposals are there, GitHub's there. But I say, yeah, I think we've had deliberation and that also gives us some time to, you know, if we want to finalize 76 and see Alexa's draft, um, we can also do that in the next week. Um, but it sounds like we're ready to, to go forth and vote on these. Um, anyone disagree, have a different opinion before we end? No. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is that uh, we don't have time for it now, but we should make sure that the next call, whenever we want to schedule it, um, that we have a discussion about the um, the two thirds LGTM stuff I was talking about with um, the getting started yes. doc. Yep. Um, but yeah, we don't have time for that now. But we can we can have a call about that um, whenever. Presumably yeah. When we discuss the charter draft. Yep. Good point. Yep. Let's let's add that to the charter discussion. So, um, all right, well, um, sounds like we're good for today. Um, so let's finish there. I'll put this online. Uh, I can't think who's missing, but it feels like Michael, maybe. Um, so anyway, this will be available as a recording. I threw some notes in there um, in the HackMD. If anyone else wants to add anything, that'd be great. And um, I can send a note to the TOB just 
stating that we're in the voting period for the two proposals with an end time of next Friday. What time next Friday? Um, I wasn't ready for such detailed questions. Sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> more I no. feel like we have to, we have to find a, we have to find well, the dividing line between 12, 1234 and 56 seconds. Um, <laughs> um, uh, CNCF wait, usually closes what things zone? at, tw go ahead. Yeah. What time zone? <laughs> well, we have to find the time. I was going to say you can do, wait, you can do anywhere on earth. That's the easiest way to do it. That's how, so yeah. Friday anywhere on earth. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to after Amy. I'll find the time zone exactly between Alexa's house and my house. So. <laughs> uh, when I am closing votes, I use 12 p.m. Pacific because that gives everybody the morning to be able to forget about it. Yeah, Up let's do you. that. Let, let's do that. That works. Sorry to lead you merrily around. No, no, no. That's good. That's good. Plus, it's that's actually more than seven days anyway. So exactly. Alrighty. Um, thanks everyone for hanging around. Thanks for a good discussion and uh, talk to you soon. Yeah, this was good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. See you later. Yep. Happy hacking. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.